Hi, I'm Joel Persinger from Practical Defense Systems. Welcome to the P2K range again out here in El Cajon, California. I'm going to show you some different tricks about drawing your concealed carry handgun. Now today I'm going to show you with a snubby pistol, a little snubby 38, but it could be just about any handgun as long as it uh, fits in the various spots I'm going to show you. One really handy place to carry a handgun, if you wish, is in your pocket, particularly if you happen to be in a, in a hot part of the country. We're in California, so if you're in the southwestern states, you know it gets hot down here. Sometimes it gets ridiculously hot down here, and you really don't want to walk around with a jacket on. So you might be wearing cargo pants like I am right now, or cargo shorts and a t-shirt. The handy place to put your gun is right here in your pocket. And as a matter of fact, I have a little snubby 5-shot 38 in this pocket. Now one of the things I like about revolvers is they're bumpy and uh, when you put them in a pocket holster or you put them in something under a jacket, because they're bumpy and lumpy, they sort of blend in with your clothing. Uh, over the years I've carried a handgun, I've never had anybody ever notice that I have anything in my pocket, but I sure do. All you got to do is reach in, get a grip on your pistol, draw it out, and there you are. Now you've presented your handgun, it's right in your hand. It comes out like magic. Pretty cool, huh? So let me show you again. By the way, if you're going to do this, it's extremely important to get yourself a quality pocket holster. Don't put the gun in your pocket without a holster because the holster does a few things. One, it keeps the gun clean, keeps it from getting lint in it and that kind of stuff from getting all boogered up. Um, but it also holds the gun in a proper presentation so it isn't tilting and moving around. A, a, a good pocket holster will hold it straight up so you can get a hold of it. And then if you get a holster that has a little bulge on the bottom like this one or has a little hook on it, it'll keep the holster in the pocket as the gun is drawn out. So let's put the gun and holster back in the pocket again and you'll notice it pretty much goes away. Yeah, pretty cool because it's comfortable no matter where I go and nobody knows I have it. So you're walking out to your car from the mall after shopping. It's maybe you shopped a little too late that night and there's some characters out there that are a little scary to you and you just walk out with your hand in your pocket. You're, maybe you're deciding to go back in the mall and get security and you can't get there quickly enough and the guy gets a little too close to you. You go, wait a minute, buddy, I, I don't want any trouble. You can do that. Hey, dude, I don't want any trouble. Back up. What he doesn't realize is not only do you have your hand in your pocket, but you have a grip on your gun. So he gets a little close, out comes the gun, firing grip. I told you, stay back, I'm armed, or whatever you got to do. Fairly quick presentation, and frankly, it's a little shocking for the guy <laughs> that you pull a gun. You know, the element of surprise can be a really good thing. So that's one way to conceal a small pistol. Whether it's a revolver or a, uh, an autoloader doesn't make a difference. You can carry it in a pocket in a small pocket holster. Now, here's another little hint. When you go to put the holster, put the gun in your pocket, make sure you take the holster out of your pocket, put the gun in the holster and take the entire thing and put that back in the pocket as one unit. Don't try to take your pistol or your revolver and reholster it in the holster while it's in your pocket. If you do, you're liable to shoot yourself squarely in the recreational center and that's going to be painful, so don't do that to yourself, okay? Make sure that you Put the gun and the holster in your pocket as one unit, and that way when you need it, hey, gun's out, you can do what you need to do, bang, 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 uh, whatever it takes, and then when you're done, put the holster back in your pocket with the gun as one unit. All right, I'm going to come back in a minute and uh, we'll show you how to draw a pistol from a concealment carry holster under a garment. Okay, I'm back and we've got a little different holster set up. Instead of the pocket holster, I've got the gun in a strong side hip holster right here. Uh, and this is a little leather model. You can pick whatever one you like that works best for you. Everybody's a little different, their body's a little different, and, and so on. But you may be in an environment where you have, it's a little cold, you got something like this over the top, or uh, maybe a heavy shirt, or a sport jacket, or a suit jacket, or maybe just a jacket jacket and you got to get it out of the way to get the gun. There's a few different ways to do this and you'll see that some people will say take your palm and put it right here and ride the palm around till the jacket gets out of the way. So you can see how that works. If I put my palm here and ride the palm around to push the jacket out of the way, I can get a good grip on the gun and lift it straight up, rotate it forward and push it out. There you go. So we'll do it again. All right, gun's back. Here we go. So here's one way to do it. You're going to take your palm of your shooting hand, put it right here in the middle of your chest while you're bringing this hand up around your belly button to keep it out of the way. Push the palm all the way back until you can find the gun. Get a good grip on the gun. Push down on the gun and it'll bounce right back out of the holster. Tilt it forward and press it out. Now the important thing with that tilt forward is that this hand stay out of the way. Find your belly. Now I've seen people say chest. Yeah, I see that a lot. 
Uh, and I think I just smacked the microphone. I apologize, but uh, you know, I see chest. That doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I like having it down here so that the gun and the hand come together at the same time. So find your belt buckle or your belly or whatever. I mean, the other thing, frankly, for me is that I'm getting older. My chest is getting smaller. My belly's getting bigger. It's just easier to find my belly, to be honest with you. So that may be something that uh, you're having trouble with, too. If you're becoming gravitationally challenged like I am, you can find that thing pretty easily. So just get your palm right here in the center. Put your support hand on your belly. Go get the gun. Push down hard on the gun to make sure you've got a good solid grip. Then lift the gun straight up out of the holster, tilt it forward, and push it out. All right, that's one method of getting the jacket out of the way. Let me show you another one. So let's put the gun back. Another method is to clear the jacket with a sweep of the hand. So you're going to hook your hand this way and get the hook in here and sweep the jacket out of the way and then come back and get the gun. So it looks like this. Sweep the jacket out of the way, get the gun, lift it up and twist it and press it out, just like that. You're just gonna rotate it and press it out. Same draw, the draw stroke is the same, it's just a matter of how you clear the garment. So instead of clearing the garment by running your hand along here, you're clearing the garment by scooping the garment and flicking it out of the way, driving it all the way back. But it's a strong drive, it's not just to this point to try to flick it out of the way. You wanna grab a hold of it and really put some force on it and jerk it out of the way and then reach down and get the gun. So there's another method of clearing a jacket or shirt or such and such out of the way. Reach over here, get it, gun's out. So it's relatively quick. You're not going to win any you know, quick draw contests, but the contest you're interested in winning is the one against the guy who wants to hurt you and dealing with the bad guy. Now one more point I want to make. When you put the gun back in the holster, make sure you do it slowly and deliberately. Take your time. Because if you don't, it's very possible that your finger might be on the trigger or that a piece of the holster or a piece of your garment might get inside the holster like that. Something might actually press the trigger and if you go nice and slow, you're going to feel that there's something in the way and you're going to stop. If you try to do it quickly and you're jamming it in there, then something might press that trigger and you're going to shoot yourself squarely in the rump. And that's going to hurt and you're going to look stupid and feel it like an idiot and be all over the news and all over YouTube and you ain't going to sit down for very long at least for a while anyway. And you got a hospital bill and all that other embarrassing stuff. So make sure the gun comes out quickly, but it goes back nice and slow and deliberately and make sure it gets in that holster without something in the way. That will make sure that you're safe as you reholster your firearm. All right, now sometimes we don't wear an open jacket or an open shirt. Sometimes we're wearing a sweater or something pullover like that. I'll be back in a second. I'll show you how to draw from that and give you a good way to do that too. Now, as I mentioned, revolvers are kind of bumpy, so they're lumpy and bumpy, so they kind of blend in. You'll notice the gun is here, so you can see it, but you'll notice as I turn around and it's under this kind of a sweater or something along these lines on a cooler month or in a cooler part of the country, uh, that it's not going to show up much. You can actually put it under a polo shirt if you have a polo shirt that's a little bit heavier, and it'll cover up under a polo shirt or a heavy t-shirt or anything like that when you have a little revolver like this, so that works pretty good. You can do the same thing with semi-autos, so you semi-auto folks, please don't send me hate mail. I do carry a semi-auto question frequently too, but I carry this revolver a lot. And part of the reason I do is it's easy and light and it's bumpy. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons for it. Now if you're wearing a garment like this, could be a hoodie, could be something like this, could be a, a shirt that you just have with the shirt tail hanging out over the top of it. You got to get it out of the way, but there's no opening for you to sweep out of the way. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one, I will tell you, if you can use both hands, is more positive and more reliable. But this hand may be busy, it might be injured, maybe you can't use it. If that's the case, then all you're going to do is grab the garment here, pull it all the way up out of the way, and then reach down and get the pistol and draw it out. So I'll do it again for you slowly. Again, we're putting the gun back slowly, as you may remember why, is we don't want to shoot ourselves in the butt. In this case, the gun is completely unloaded, so for the demonstration purposes, so there's no way I can shoot myself. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I'm grateful for stuff like that. All right, so here we go again. All we're going to do is reach up, get the garment out of the way, grab the pistol, and bring it out. Now, you'll notice that my, my support hand, again, comes back to my belly. If, for some reason, you have your hand out, maybe it's to say, hey, look, I don't want any trouble, I don't want any trouble, I don't want any trouble. That's fine. If you keep it out there, you can keep it out there. That'll fend off attacks or somebody trying to hit you with something. It's a good thing to have out there. But make sure when the gun comes out that you don't muzzle your fingers. Make sure that the gun, there's a separation between your gun and the hand as the gun comes out. You don't have the gun, the, your support hand in front of the gun. You don't want to muzzle your fingers because in a nervous moment, it's very easy for you to shoot your fingers off. So we don't want to do that. So when you look at it from a camera angle, it may look as if I'm sweeping my fingers, but I'm not. My hand, as you can see, 
is quite a ways away from my gun hand. So as the gun comes up, if your hand is out here, just make sure that they meet without the muzzle covering your gun hand or your, your support hand. You don't want to shoot yourself. Better to, if you have to shoot anybody, make sure it's the bad guy. All right, now, if you happen to have two hands available, because this one isn't injured, uh, you know, you're not trying to push a loved one out of the way or something, you've got two hands available. Now, I'm going to stop right there and say, you've got your cell phone in your hand. You know what? This hand is still available. Drop the phone and get the gun. You can always pick up the phone later. you got your, your latte you just spent five bucks on. Drop the latte. <laughs> get the gun. <laughs> always go back and get another latte, okay? So if it's in this hand and it isn't worth hanging on to, drop that sucker and get the gun. So here's another way to do that. I'm going to turn sideways a little bit so you can see it. This is really, really positive and it works really well. First thing is take both hands and grab the garment. Lift the garment straight off off the gun and then with your support hand, pull the garment across your body. That'll pull the, gun, the garment off the gun and up against your body and it also takes that support hand and positively moves it away from where the gun is. Then, again, push down on the gun to get a good grip. It bounces out of the holster, rotates forward, and look where your hand is. Your support hand is right here. You can meet it, and away you go. So a little faster, this is what that looks like. Again, I'll show you again slowly. I grab it, lift it up, get the gun, and off you go. But don't forget, one of the main movements is pull the garment across your body. Okay, so gun comes, here we go, <laughs> sorry, gun comes up. Garment comes up, goes across your body, gun is out, and off you go. That's relatively quick, wouldn't you say? And I'm not really going the fastest I could go with it. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. And then when you put the gun away, make sure you put the gun away, as I said, slowly and deliberately so that the gun is going away in the holster without risk of shooting yourself because you've got something in the way. One more time. Up and across, gun out. Now, I've had people say, well, that doesn't work very well because I have to use both hands. It's going to take more time. I think you just noticed that it's pretty darn quick. All right, there's one more concealment option that's fairly popular. It's a little difficult for me to do because I'm an old guy and I'm not all that limber anymore, but I'm going to show it to you anyway when I get back. There are many other options for carrying a gun concealed. Uh, I'm just going through a few here. Obviously, there's shoulder holsters and there's purse holsters and some of which I'm not going to go over today. Uh, we'll do another video about those later on. But the last one I want to show you now is somewhat popular. Uh, it's not terribly popular with me, it, but, uh, and I'll tell you why. It's the ankle holster. Uh, that's great, and if you're young and you're agile and you're quick, and I'm none of those things, <laughs> then you can bust down there and get that sucker, just like that. But what I've discovered as I've gotten older is that thing down there, that the older I get, the farther away that gets, and I can't get there very quickly. So I don't carry a gun this way, but you may choose to, and if it works for you, hey, that's great. Let me show you how to get to the gun. First of all, an ankle holster you want to have on your, on your opposite side ankle. So if I, I'm right-handed, I've got it on the inside of my left ankle, and that's the proper place to put it. Over here on my right ankle, it's going to be hard for me to get to reach around my ankle to get it, and uh, so I wouldn't put it there. So you're going to want to buy a holster set up so that you can get to your opposite side ankle to the inside. And so all you have to do is step forward. This is where the agility comes in and the speed. So if I want the gun, I can't reach around and get it down here. It's down there. And the best way for me to do that is simply step forward, make a nice step forward, and drop down on one knee. And as I get down here, grab my pant leg and pull it up. Now you'll notice if I grab here, that doesn't work that well. So instead, I'm going to grab the pant leg all the way to the bottom and lift it off the gun. Now I've got the gun out of the holster, straight up and out. Let's do it again. I'll do it, do it slowly for you so you can see it. Let's put the gun back. Now, one thing I didn't do and I should have done is wear pants with a little looser fitting cuff on the end. Makes it a little easier to get the gun. And that way you don't have the problems I'm having at the moment. But once again, gun is down there. You're going to step forward, lift the pant leg up, remove the gun, and press it out. Same thing to put it back. Make sure you do it nice and gently and slowly so that you don't shoot yourself squarely in the ankle. Um, and I have seen a couple of holsters like this designed so that the gun is pointing up. I don't particularly like guns pointed up at me, so I wouldn't carry one of those. I don't know why anybody would, but I have seen those a couple times. I don't advise those because I think it's better if the gun's going to be pointed at anything, let it be pointed at the edge of your shoe. Not at your face, your knee, your groin. Again, we don't want to shoot ourselves in the recreational center. Uh, that simply doesn't work. All right, so one more time. We're going to step forward, and as we do, we'll step forward and hike up our pants a little bit, grab the pant leg, 
get the gun, and the gun is out. Now that's not too bad for an antique like me. <laughs> if you're young, you can do it a lot quicker, so this might be a good viable option for you. If you're a security officer or police officer working uh, uh, plain clothes or something, maybe having a gun down here as a backup wouldn't be a bad plan. Um, I'm not terribly in favor of it as my primary spot to have a weapon, but if it works for you, now at least you know how to get the darn thing out. Okay, so why am I showing you this? Because I do run into students all the time who want to carry a big old monster like this. You know what? I wouldn't mind carrying a big old monster like this either because if I'm going to fight with a gun, give me the biggest one I can, I can have. Uh, the problem is, as you've discovered, we have to conceal them. And this one's not going to fit in your pocket unless you're nine feet tall and weigh 700 pounds, it's certainly not going to fit in an ankle holster. Uh, it's going to get really, really uncomfortable sitting over here on your hip and you're bending over and sitting in a chair and having to poke in the ribs and a hammer poking on you or the grip or whatever the case might be. And no matter what you cover it up with, it's going to print like crazy. So this is a great gun to carry as a security officer, police officer, full-size gun, revolver or semi-auto or whatever. I just happen to grab a revolver. Uh, it's also a great gun for great type of gun, a full-size duty weapon for your home defense gun. But for personal defense while you're carrying it around in a concealed carry situation, get yourself an always gun, something that's small enough that you're always going to have it with you, that you have many concealment options for. And that's why I was showing you the snubby. A, a small auto loader would be just as good. It's all a matter of personal preference. Just make sure it's something you can shoot well, you can put rounds on target, and, uh, and that's comfortable for you to shoot and comfortable for you to carry. And now you've got some various different options on where to carry it. Thank you very much for watching our videos. I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. We've got some great videos before that you can watch that are earlier ones. We've got some terrific ones coming up. And don't forget to share us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and all those other wonderful places. And thank you again to the P2K range for letting us use this great facility. We really appreciate it.